Hey guys, here's a quick tip on how to get your character in your 2D game to look in the correct direction when moving left or right. There are many demos out there floating around the internet suggesting one way, which works in a very limited sort of scenarios. And I'll show you a, a different way and show you why it's better than the prevailing method out there. First, let's look at the screenshots, these screenshots, and see what they're doing. I'll show you why it works kind of, sort of, and I'll show you why there's a much better method and consistent method. Here are some screenshots that you might see floating around the internet or in some YouTube videos. Almost every example in the YouTube uses this method of taking your character's transform local scale and grabbing the X value and multiplying it by negative one. Believe it or not, this came from a tutorial that Unity put out many years ago. Let's examine some of this code. Here I have a working version of it in my flip and move and flip script. And I've made a copy of this in the description below. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take um, everyone else's method and show you why it works and then show you a, a better way. Let's sort of break down what's going on here because the most of the logic makes sense and it's just the execution that I think could be um, more nuanced. So here we have a scenario where we have a character and we wanna be able to move left and right. And when they're moving right, um, our, our sprite should be looking to the right. And when we move to the left, then we want our sprite to be moving to the left. And let me show you exactly what the code is doing in the transform and we'll show you what it does in the code. So here our character is moving to the right or looking to the right and that scale is set to the positive value in the X. And in the case that we want our character to be moving this way, then this thing, sh this sprite should flip and how they're doing it is applying a negative one to scale, negative one. You should see that the sp sprite does flip and in, we should be satisfied with that, right? Um, let me show you why that sort of breaks down. Let's just look at the code and where that happens. It does make sense. When we're taking our input values, which we get from our input dot get access horizontal, and we're applying by some sort of speed and time dot delta time. This is all grade method right here. We have a horizontal value, which represents whether they should be moving to the left if it's negative and to the right if it's positive. And then we have a point of reference, which is our facing right Boolean. Um, many times our sprites should be looking in one direction. Oftentimes it could be right or to the left, but this helps us judge whether or not we have to flip. And so many examples use this facing left or facing right. And you can see it here in this um, parameter or field that we have here. And so my Sprite naturally looks to the right, and so I check this box. If your sprite or a character looks to the left, then you should start out with this box unchecked. This is again is how every most people do this. And so the logic follows that when we're doing it the wrong way to flip, if our character happens to be moved to the left and we happen to face right, we need to flip that sprite. Let me just illustrate this here. If we happen to be moving this direction and our sprite is looking to the right, we need to be flipping that sprite. So applying a negative one to that scale. So it should be looking that way when we move this way. And in the case that we move to the right and our sprite is looking to the left, we need to apply a negative one again. And so mathematically, if we just multiply by negative one, we alternate between positive and negative. That makes sense. And that's what's happening here. So the logic makes sense here. And how they're doing it is that we gra they grab the transform.local scale, and then we multiply negative one to the X value, just like I was doing in the inspector manually. And then we would just apply it back in here. This is good because we do end up having the sprite looking left or right when we press the arrow keys. Where this breaks down, or when I think that it should be more nuanced, is that let's say that we want to be shooting projectile, and I've and the best way to do this, or the most convenient way, is to have the projectile spawn point be a child of the character object. And you can see this here. When I click on the child object, I have put a little icon that represents the spawn point. So if I hit tab, projectile shoots from that point. And using the method that everyone else is using, if I look to the left, if I shoot, 
you can notice that my spawn point is staying in relative position to my character, which is great. But when I fire, based on the way that I'm having this code, I'm looking to the left and all my projectiles are moving to the right. And so what does my code look like? It's probably the most cleanest instantiation code ever. I'm spawning from the, I'm spawning a projectile at the spawn point that I've chosen. And then I'm using the transform rotation of my parent. And so this is where it breaks down. There could be more complicated code and um, to grab the character's X scale or X um, local scale value. But why would we do that? There's a much better way to prevent all of this um, kludgy coding. And I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. What in the method that I'm suggesting, which is more efficient, we would use, I'm going to comment out the wrong code and use the, the way that I think is the proper code. We're going to follow the same logic here, but rather than adjusting the local scale and not any of the children, we're just going to rotate the entire transform. And what that happens there is that it also rotates all the children's transforms as well. So if we jump back into the code, you'll notice that, again, if I press left, our character looks to the left, and the transform also flips. Hmm, did I see this code? Let's see, we should see those arrows look the other way. Proper save. We should see this um, rotation take effect as well. Let's see. Yeah, so you see that this the transform also flips just like Bob's. So Again, this is the regular transform with the arrows facing in their natural directions. When I hit to the left, we can see that Bob's transform rotates about the Y axis. I'm going to hit left. You can see that it rotates 180 in Euler angles. And the spawn point rotates as well. And so when we're calling the projectile spawn code or instantiation code, it's telling it to take the transform of the spawn point, which is a reflection of also the character. And so the projectile is gonna have the correct rotation when I press my fire. When I look the other way, this is the other. It's looking the correct way as well. So I feel like this method when we're using the transform.rotate and just rotating in 180, no matter which way we want the resultant angle, is gonna allow us to flip and not have to worry about child objects not rotating along with the parent character. If this you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. I like to throw out these types of short Unity tutorial tips and try to dispel some confusing elements that might be out there in the internets. Um, Please look out for other videos. Um, hope you guys have a great day. Thanks.